Hey guys, Saf here with another Read Shadow Legends video, and today we have a Adventurer Deck of Fate, or Anniversary, it was Adventurer last time, I kind of was, I don't know why Adventure is in my brain, Anniversary Deck of Fate, and the most popular time for anyone who ever has any form of Primal Shards, which, to be honest, not many people have a lot of these, unless you're really into Hydra and Live Arena, that's where you get the most amount of Primal Shards, because you can pick up a lot of Primal Quartz, but it is the best time to try and get your hands on, probably for a lot of people, either their second or more than likely first mythical champion that is kind of like what we're after here it is still also a very good legendary rate right this is a two percent chance for legendary it is not bad so i've got a few primal shards here i've been saving up over time uh, that we're going to be pulling on this video but let's just first have a look at this anniversary deck of fate this is kind of like replace the usual champion chase event what have we got going on here then so we've got a series of rewards which are reaction gear now reaction is only available from cbc normally this is available from either sort of going one two or two one three one or four zero in sort of that cbc window right you, you you don't have to win every cbc but you at least have to kind of not lose so badly that you don't get the first reward so other than that th that's the only place we've ever been able to get reaction and reaction is very good for arena because it stops the enemy from critically hitting you until you take a turn it is a counter to these kind of like one shot mechanics in addition we've also got some chaos powder always nice to see some of this two mythical chaos ores now a lot of people might say this isn't very valuable I actually think this is incredibly valuable because of how difficult it is to acquire and how difficult it is to get mythical gear to begin with. So the fact that, you know, you can get this mythical chaos ore here really good. Some gems. What else we got here? We've got two legendary books. We've got effectively, you know, an, an, an immortal soul stone that is, in, in essence, it's the same thing. And a few others. Generally, though, not. It's, it's kind of like really like luxury items. This is items that you would want if you're a super end game. You're not really excited about a lot of these things if you're in the early to mid game, apart from probably the gems in the legendary book. We also have the usual thing with the deck of fates. You know, if you get three of the same color, you flip it over, you get some bonus rewards. And this can be quite good if you get a lot of gems, maybe a lot of energy. Maybe you pick up like the, the eternal soul stone. If you get something like the ham or the barrel, or 25 brews. I mean, I'll be honest, 100 gems versus 25 brews, it's not even in the same atmosphere. It's not even in the same universe of value to me. 20, 25 brews is absolutely not comparable to 100 gems. So it's, it's, it's kind of good if you can get some of these rewards, but most of the time trying to get purple is very difficult. This time we've got 10 epic cards, so really you've got to get three epic in a row. It's very hard. Uh, 13 rare cards and 17 common cards. So how do you work? You need to get 40,000 so how does this work? You need to get 40,000 points. You're going to get points from doing artifact acquisition and summon cha summoning champion. So effectively, it's a dungeon divers with summon rush. And the points you can see down here are basically driving you towards summoning. You can do it with dungeon divers, but you will probably primarily get things with summoning. And as it's a times two primal, you know, a lot of people will be pulling their primal shots. So what we're going to do quickly is just do a very simple math breakdown to see, you know, how many, how much energy is it going to cost us with dungeon divers and how many shards do we need? So just before we get into the analysis, I just want to point out that they did drop the amount of points we have for getting artifacts, the dungeon divers. It's down about 33% from the last time, but I think they also, like there was a dungeon divers where it was even worse than the current one. So it is, it's not as bad as it has been, but it's worse than what it was before. You know, all of these kind of get plugged into the average calculator here and we can work out kind of how much points it's going to take how many points are we going to get per energy it always ends up being that stage 20 is the best stage for these kind of dungeon diver events nothing really is different there in terms of summoning they have increased the shard value from the previous summon rush deck of fates events we've had so get a little bit more about 200 100 25 you know it's really the primal and sacreds they want you to pull so a little bit more than there so what does it work out as well if you wanted to do it just with shards then in order for you to complete the entire deck, you need 44 primal shards. 44. I've got 34, so I'm a little bit below. So I could probably offset it with either some sacreds or something just to basically finish it off. Or I will use dungeon divers, right? If you want to do 30 flips, it's about 33. So I can get about 34, roughly around about 34 card flips for mine. Uh, you probably can do it with sacred shards if you want, but 18 sacred shards is a hell of an investment. You know, you're only really looking at this if you're going to be pulling primal shards. Now, what does this mean if you want to do dungeon divers? Well, stage 20 is always the best, as we said. If you want to do all of this, you're doing 2,000 dungeon runs or 32,000 energy. 
like I said, this is really designed. It's really, really designed for you to be doing summoning with a little bit of offset. So for example, I have 34 primal shards. You can see that I need to get around about 9,400 points, which is about 480 runs of a dungeon. That is still 7,000 energy. It's still a lot for me to chase there. So it's still quite a lot of energy. Uh, for you to do. I do have a little comparison down here. I basically say, well, if a dungeon dive is 7,500, you know, the, in terms of the rewards, how does it compare? Well, it's basically more efficient if you only flip 10. So if you get good rewards, like if you get a legendary book, then it's more efficient if you only have to flip 10. But m once you get to 20, 30, and 40, the dungeon dive is basically, it's more expensive than a dungeon divers in, in effect, right? Because a dungeon divers is normally around about 9,000 energy on this point these days. Dungeon Divers is very expensive in terms of energy. So, you know, in terms of me here, I'm gonna be able to do this and then I'll be offset it. As usual, I will save this spreadsheet in this description of the video uh, so that you can use it for your own sort of offsetting. How many more dungeon runs am I gonna to need to do? Do I wanna go and flip some more cards? Is it worth it? That's kind of like the thing. So with that said, I am pulling my Primal Shards right now. Uh, that's the main topic of this video. I just wanted to do a quick rundown of the anniversary deck of Fate events that I do. As I said, the way you do it, summon champions, get artifacts, you get points. Every thousand you flip a card. You really want to try and flip the same colors. But all of these rewards here, if you flip every card, you will always get. So it's a pretty good... Like if you are an arena-focused person, this is pretty good, right? You're getting a, a basically a faction banner for all of them. I mean, they have given you a mythical one for Banner Lords, High Elves, and the Sacred Order. So they kind of get a bit of an advantage over someone like an Undead Horde because they're only getting an Epic. So it's a bit weird in, in the way that they prioritize some factions, but these rewards are pretty good. If you're an end game player, these are the type of things you're really hunting for in the game these days. If you can get three in a row, it's a bonus reward, but I never really look at these three in a row in, in much seriousness because it's just so hard to do. The green ones though, you can get lucky. I've at times, being able to pick up an extra 400 gems just because I've got three green in a row. So let's look at the summoning event. As I said, it's a primal times two of everything. So it's the best time to use your primal shards. They do sometimes do a primal just times two epic and legendary. They're not as good, even though they do give good rates because really the primal shard gives you mythical. That's the purpose of the primal shard here. I've only got two mythicals. I've been able to get the Lady Mikage that I had from the Guaranteed Fusion. And then the only one that I've ever summoned is Garol. So that is the only two that I've got. Which mythicals would I currently be looking for? Well, I think I'm looking for here, someone like Trixia would be absolutely you know, brilliant for me to get. I don't have a Kaima or a Yumiko or uh, any, sort of, any sort of lockout. So that is a champion that absolutely would give me something in my account that I do not have. Frolny unlocks a couple of stages, which is nice in Centranos um, and is actually a pretty good Nuka. Gizmak, I think people are sleeping on a little bit. I think he's really good. And Alaz is also really good as well. Um, we all know that Siegfried is probably the best nuker in Arena right now because of the raw power that he outputs. So he wouldn't be a bad option either, um, as is Galathir. I'm absolutely terrified of fighting Galathir most of the time because of this passive. You're, he's very hard to kill and he revives everyone and you kind of just don't know what's happening. He, he kind of just does everything and it's just nothing you can really do. He's got a really strong survival support kit, really, really fast as well. When you go into this other form, you get locked out. He, he can't trigger counterattacks and he drops your turn meter. He locks you out. You're just sitting there and you just get galathid to death and he can't get one shot. So he's very strong as well. But definitely someone like a Crixia is, is high up on my list. Um, we obviously have things like the chicken and we have Lazarius, but I absolutely think either something like Galathir or Crixia to help my teams win in Arena or Siegfried for just absolute domination. But 34 is not a lot, right? 34 is not a lot. It's still only a 1% chance. The Mercy system is really low. You need to actually have quite a lot of summons before this works. And I've only just recently reset my Mercy system. So there's a very good chance that I could pull all 34 and get nothing but we'll see what we get you never know we might get something good the other thing to remember is you're getting very good legendary rates so you know it's a very good chance you might pick up some good epics or legendaries on the way with that said let's get summoning i've got enough space 34 we'll basically pull 10 summon 4 and then we'll pull the last 20 that's the way we'll do it let's see summon in 10 500,000 silver by the way it's a lot of silver what are we gonna get there's the first epic juliana not great not great. We are still trying to plus four a number of different epics here. So we're still after some good ones here. Chonor are not one of them. Legendary. Ooh, it's an Ancora. Ooh, that's an interesting one. Would a second Ancora benefit me? That's an interesting one. Uh, I actually, I'm, I, I have to admit, Ancora is in one of the rare groups that I initially looked at and thought wasn't very good without Narcissus. But actually, 
is super good without Narsus, even if you don't have him, because this passive is super helpful when you're trying to protect your damage dealer. It's a massive torment counter, because so long as your damage dealer has the highest crit damage, they can never be debuffed. She keeps stealing it and bringing it away. Very good cleanse kit. This A1 can be very frustrating to fight because you keep resetting the abilities, especially with champions that have low cooldowns like Rotus and, and those types of champions. And the revive is also a very strong revive. So I have to say, she is potentially interesting to make as a second, having a second version of Ancora for usage. Very, very great champion. We also have Mycelic Priest on. Legendary in the first 10. That's, that's crazy good. That is crazy good. What else are we going to get? We're going to pull the four here individually, and then we're going to pull the last, last 20 back to back. More rares. We don't want the rares. We want the epics. There we go. Epic. We get a Franox. Franox is very good for a plus four. This is one of the hardest abilities of damage in the game. One of the hardest hitting abilities in the game. Very, very, very strong. It's like a nine point something multiplier if you get this bonus. So having a plus four Franox could do a lot of work for you. Two more. And then we're going to pull another 10 back to back. Another epic. What are we going to get? We're going to get an Aishma. One of the Mikage ones, if you haven't got her. Uh, it's an okay champion. A decent Poisoner with a bit of Weaken. One of those champions you would use as, you know, a Sintranus wave maybe if you needed needed to set up. A decent but nothing crazy. Uh, and we get another epic, really good epic rates, and we get Tagoa. I know a lot of people really like Tagoa. Um, I personally need to do more time with Tagoa to understand him. Ten more, let's go. The last 20, what are we going to get? Are we going to get a mythical? Are we going to see red? We probably not. We have to be realistic. We probably won't see red here. That is a very ambitious consideration. A gray bid. Oh, don't go 10 rays. Not 10 rays. Save me with a purple. Oh, it hurts when you get a 10 ray. It hurts when you get a 10 ray. It really does. The last 10. Are we going to get anything good? Are we going to get another legendary? Oh, come on. Stop with the... Stop. There we go. The purple's in. We get a gory. Not great. A ruella. Oh, legendary. Oh, it's a walking tomb drang. Oh, I don't need a third walking tomb drang. But hey, I mean, two legendary. Oh my lord. It's finally happened. It's taken me nearly five years. Five years to do this. And you're all probably wondering, what the hell is Saf on about? What craziness. I have finally managed to acquire Corpse Collector. I have sat in various live streams going, can you believe everyone? I've never pulled a corpse collector. We have finally pulled a corpse collector. What an achievement. I, you might be wondering, well, why are you talking about this? It's actually quite good for a lot of things. Three hit poisons. So three 5% poisons with a veil buff on a four turn cooldown. We also get heal reduction, decrease accuracy. Kind of good for someone like an Amius or various places where you need lots of debuffs. And we also have a leech. She's actually quite a good epic. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. So we got out of 34, two legendaries, some interesting epics, and Ancora is a duplicate. Hard to say whether that's good or not. Hard to say whether that is worthwhile or not. Unfortunately, I kind of have like got all, all these dupes. Like this extra drang is kind of useless as a third dupe. The Ancora is whether or not I want to build her. Now I could potentially remove this here, for example, and put the Ancora in and then make a plus two drang. Is an option. We are very close to a plus four best office as well. We haven't quite got enough. We need one more to do it. Um, and there's also a consideration I could do a plus two versus self potentially. You know, it's one of those things, uh, not great. And both of them were night revs. But hey, look, two legendaries. You can't complain with that kind of odds. Uh, let's flip some deck of fates to finish off the video as well. I've got 30 flips here that I can do. Let's see um, what we're going to get. So I always like to start off the corner here. Now we're looking for three in a row. I'm going to start with 200 gems. Great. That's awesome. That's going to help repay some of the debt that I've just spent in terms of silver. And then we go a legendary book. Now, this is ultra efficient. If this is all you did, you pull two shards and you walk away with the legendary book. This is like the best event you've ever done. It is really good. But uh, that's not what we're going to do here. We're going to pull more. Oh, we're down to green. We're not getting three in a row yet. There's a green and another green. Oh, we got a blue. That's rubbish. But hey, these, these eternal lessons are really good. Let's go over another corner there. Another blue. Can we get another blue? Oh, ah, oh, it's painful. We're, we're not having much luck yet. There's the other blue. Of course it is. Uh, what are we going to do? Let's go bottom left. There's a green. Surely we're going to get a three in a row. There's a green. And then a green. No, it's a purple. Ah, oh, okay. Purple here. Oh, it's a blue. We are not having much luck here. 
There's the purple. They always put some purples together. I've noticed this. Uh, okay, let's go over here. Oh, wow. We are losing this badly. We're not getting three in a row, are we? This is what I don't like about this event. You need to get three in a row. Is this a green? Oh. <laughs> Pete. Uh, so we've already lost one, two, three, four of the ten epics. I can still get a three in a row epic, but it's very hard. Oh, God. Here we go. Oh, this is nerve-wracking. Now, they always put one... I think one of these will be close. Is this the one? Oh! I bet it's the one above. I knew it! Oh, it's so painful! It's so painful. I, you, they always put a couple of them together. And I, it's like you just playing devil's advocate. Which way is it going to go? That could have been a three in a row. Oh, what a painful experience. Um, let's see if we can actually just get one three in a row. Right, give me a green. Yay! A three in a row and we get... Okay, a six star epic chaos or not the best, not the worst. We've got six more flips to go. There's another purple. Ooh. Let's put this one there. Oh. Blue. There's our three blues in a row. There's the other purple. So we've got one, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Kind of running out of epic op opportunities. Oh, we're out of cards. Okay, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight epics. So I'd have to pull the next two epics in a row to be able to get it. But what we did get out of that 30, we got both legendary books. We've got the Chaos Powder. We've got all three mythical versions of the banner. So in, all, in essence, I've got a lot of the rewards already. What we're probably waiting on is the barrel. That's going to be behind one of them. And probably like some of these coins potentially. Even not, maybe. Maybe they're behind the blue. I don't really know what the last purple is. But the barrel will be one of the purples. And maybe the mythical chaos or the another mythical chaos or there you go. So that will be what we're missing. So, you know, it's a pretty good event if you if you have primal shards like I did to pull. You know, it's pretty good. Um, we do... I, I don't have any storage. I have to do some gear cleansing. You can see them all sitting here. Uh, that's, that's next on the agenda is to do a big gear cleanse session because I have to clear out a lot of these rewards to make space in my account. That is where we're at right now. I have, uh, if a lot of you are like this, I'm going to be using the free regearing event to try and solve this problem. So we'll see how it goes. But there you go, guys. That is the times two primal event completed. Uh, there is a little bit of cheeky quartz available on the top of the champion training. If you're close, you can kind of like push your way up to here to get this champion training done. That might give you enough quartz to be able to create another one like it would for me. Uh, if I did a bunch of champion training and just got that done, that would give me a little bit of quartz. So, you know, keep an eye out for those. And as I said, live arena chests and Hydro Clash are really good efforts. You know, they're really good ways for you to, to be able to get the rewards. Every, you know, I pick up a lot of this a month. This is potentially four primal shards a month if you can win live arena. Obviously, you need to be in like silver four, gold one to get a lot of this. But it, I, I normally get at least one primal shard per 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 chest in gold so it is hard you do need to win a lot of fights but if you do live arena regularly it's a good source as is hydro clash but we all know hydro clash has its challenges as well but there we go guys let me know in the comments below what do you think of this event do you think the 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 anniversary deck of fate events is worth it are you pulling primal shards and if you did were you lucky did you get your first or second mythical or maybe you got a lot more mythicals let me know in the comments below guys and i'll catch you in the next video